uh, initiatives uh, to, to really have a, have a view on diversity, on quality of people. And probably one of the pitfalls I've seen in previous companies is that you push diversity to the limit of discrimination. Sometimes we go for a candidate for the wrong reason. Um, and I think it's, it's the biggest mistake we can do because then it kills the willingness to go further with diversity and to be able to leverage the quality we have. In every of my teams, we have a diverse uh, approach and a diversified approach. I have some very good sales managers uh, uh, in my team. I, we have some very good salespeople in our team here at Cisco. And it's recognized that it brings value to the company, to the team, to the vision, to the approach. So we are delighted to uh, host the Jump event here. Um, I, th I see that it's not only just women for women. We have another man in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's important because it should it should not be a woman only fight. I think it's 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 a global concern that everybody gets a fair chance and that we get recognized the quality of everybody around the table <coughs> going going forward. So with that, I wish you a very, very successful event. And I'm looking forward to hear how to attract women. <laughs> what are the best business practices to have the best women on board? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Arno. It's really great to have uh, the, the manager at the top of the organization when we do such a, such a session. Uh, we had that opportunity also with the CEO of Catherine uh, at Euroclear. Uh, and um, I, I, I think he was happy about uh, it. I, I will come he was happy about the, 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 the outcomes of the session, so it's really great that you are here, so I really appreciate it. Um, so in order to introduce uh, the, the topic, uh, we have another man, <laughs> three <Yeah>. men. <laughs> you know, this is the glass elevator, because men that are taking part in such a, a session are much more visible. So it's not a glass ceiling, it's a glass elevator <laughs> for you guys. So, but I'm happy about that. Um, so what I always say about di the difference about diversity and equality at work is that diversity is much more focused on non-discriminating at the entry level of the labor market. But for equality between women and men, it's very much different because we have 60% of the graduates. So it's not so much, even if, uh, about the discrimination of, at, at the entry level, so for young graduates, but it's much more a question of share of power. And this is why it is completely uh, different, different tools that we need to implement and, and, and different kind of a conversation. The cost of non-discrimination was uh, very recently analyzed for France. Uh, they analyzed every kind of discrimination. That means discrimination at the entry level of the labor market, the pay gap, the part-time, and the promotion, how to get uh, the, the chances that every category of people has to get to the key uh, decision positions. And they found it out that even now, still, the first category of people that are the most discriminated are women. And then immediately afterwards are people with a background, uh, cultural background from the Maghreb, and after, after that, uh, a black skin. So women, women, and women, all the time. And uh, of course, if you then you add it, the difficulties when you have a woman coming from a Maghreb background of immigration, uh, it of course added so much more difficulty uh, in her career path. They have analyzed how much it cost to the growth of the country, and it is absurd. And everybody, I suppose that you know that, every kind of, of, of analysis from Goldman Sachs, from the European Commission, uh, from, from the Credit Suisse, everybody, uh, uh, says that there is an enormous potential that is that is not tackled and that costs a lot for the GDP. Uh, this analysis for France uh, talked about 14% uh, of the GDP. 
that we are losing because we are discriminating. But I still remind you, the first category of people that are discriminated are women. Uh, Claudia was there on Thursday night. Uh, Mia Hella, uh, the general manager, HR manager of uh, uh, Indie is not there for the moment. I, I, I suppose she will come. Uh, we were there at this event, and there was a HR manager for industry that told us that there were 60% of engineers that were women. And I said, oh, I must have uh, heard wrongly. It must be 70-70, uh, she said. And I said, no, it must be 17. Twice I completed it. 17, maybe. No, no, 70. So if, if there is such a lack of knowledge uh, for an industry HR manager uh, to recognize that there is a problem in uh, the qualifications of women, in certain types of qualifications of women, and most of all, engineers and IT, then it is complicated to have really good action plan in order to get the most of these talents that very, very few women that do, uh, uh, that do graduate in this kind of, of, uh, of, uh, of qualifications. When I was on, on Saturday, I was doing a, a conference with the vice rector of Université de Namur, and she's a teacher, a professor, academia professor, in the IT faculty. And she said, at the beginning of my career, we were 30% of women in the auditorium. And now, there are 3% of women. And so, the problem is really be, uh, becoming uh, bigger and bigger. That means that for companies, uh, most of the companies around the table that are dedicated to recruiting engineers and uh, with IT backgrounds also, we have a real problem in tackling uh, these, these women. We need to face that. It's not a short-term action that we need to implement. It's a long-term action. We need also, um, we need, we, we need actions from the public bodies because only co uh, companies cannot change a whole mentality. So it must be a connect in connection with public bodies, with NGOs, that we can face that. But I still repeat, at the long term, uh, uh, at, at a long term uh, view, um, what we did in terms, we did many things. Uh, the first thing that we did well, is that some years ago we were national point of contact for women in technology. The central uh, uh, European point of contact was in Oslo. And our first task was to implement, to build the platform of different actors. So a task force. Task force with public bodies, uh, together with NGOs, working on that specific topic, how to get more uh, uh, girls into, uh, into science, into engineering, into IT and also companies. We, we needed to gather all, uh, everybody. We, we did a fantastic uh, analysis of figures and uh, we will send it to you uh, after, uh, after this meeting. Uh, we did a report on that and we did also a fantastic uh, uh, launch, event launch uh, at, the, at the Senate. So everybody was so happy. And then when it came to, okay, please come into that platform so that we can exchange best practices. Companies were there. We had no problem to, uh, to attract companies, but public bodies. It's a regional matter in Belgium. It's not a national one. So Brussels and Wallonia were not very enthusiastic, but they said, okay, we will come. But Flanders didn't want to exchange their press practices with the other two regions. So we had already a problem there. Uh, and even if Flanders is much more active than the other two regions. And then the NGOs uh, that we contacted, there are some that are doing a good job. They think they are fighting between each other in order to attract public funding. And so they didn't want to share their best practices. And so we were there with a task force that could not uh, live, of course, because we didn't have all the actors around the table. And so after a bit more than one year, we decided to leave that project on fertility. So there is a big, big challenge uh, uh, ahead of us. Then another thing that we did is Siemens. 
Siemens never really participated to jump, neither to the jump forum, neither to, to the hub and so on. But at a certain point, they called me. Uh, we need urgently to, to meet you because we have quotas. Uh, so Munich uh, called us, uh, 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 imposed us quotas. And the problem is that we don't have enough women to fill uh, these quotas, even at the, at the entry level. Uh, OK, OK, I'm coming. And so uh, what we did is that we, uh, uh, um, we designed a communication uh, campaign. You know, the keyword for Siemens is innovation. It's a fantastic keyword. And what we decided to do is that to tackle uh, uh, girls into, uh, that are already uh, doing these studies of engineers, industrial or civil engineering, uh, we decided to use innovation and to say, in order for Siemens to, uh, to stay the best innovator, we need your talent, your f uh, uh, you women, we need you. And uh, we, um, not only we did that communication campaign, but we organized also uh, an event, an event on their premises, so we use coaches in order to bring all these girls uh, into their premises in Siemens. They had the occasion of, 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 of really meeting the research teams, the different research teams, and also uh, having meetings with uh, women that did a, a great career uh, within Siemens, and having some workshops, like, for example, how to, how to answer to sexist aggressions. And they were very, very happy because, of course, they are so few into the engineering studies in a very so much masculine environment. It was uh, uh, very useful for them already at their moment in, 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 in lifetime. And another thing that we did uh, is that uh, I personally uh, was into the uh, gender expert team, but also the communication expert team of the European Commission to launch a very big awareness campaign to attract more women into science. So it was not about IT because you, you I don't know if you know, but in the, in the European Commission, Claudia knows it very well, uh, DGs unfortunately don't really work together and IT is another DG, uh, DG general direction than, than research. But anyway, okay, so we focus on science. And we decided to do that awareness public campaign on science, it's a girl thing. Say, we need you girls, we need your talent. Uh, science uh, is also for girls. You don't need to, to, be the, uh, 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 to have no makeup and you know, uh, in order to be a good uh, 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 science person. Uh, so we, 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 we designed all the communication uh, campaign. We checked all the tools that were implemented. We worked for two years. And at the very end of the process, everything was really great. So much money was involved in that. And at the end of the process, there was a video, a video that had to go on the social medias uh, in order to be viral, of course, and to launch the campaign. Unfortunately, we didn't check the video because it came out. And the video, the, the, the very last tool that we didn't check, yes, of course, used the stereotypes and by saying we need girls and science, it's a girl thing. But unfortunately, it was humiliating for women. Humiliating for women, uh, I, I don't know if you have seen it, but it made a so uh, a bad buzz that it was, com it was really crazy. And, and even the people within the commission thought they were fired after that. Unfortunately, in, uh, uh, instead of taking that uh, uh, bad adventure, bad case, to say people, to say to, to tell people, see how it is difficult to tackle stereotypes, see how it is difficult to take to tackle gender differences, we did it wrong. So uh, forgive us. We will uh, make it brand new with your suggestions. And a lot of uh, NGOs and different experts sent. Uh, uh, some suggestions to the European Commission, but they did nothing out of them, uh, 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 and they they uh, they had under uh, under the table saying, "Oh, we t we, t we take out uh, uh, the the video from the social media, and uh, we will uh, we we take out the pink from the uh, you know from the logo, uh, science is a girl thing, and so they made a campaign which which is without any kind of soul." So this is to say that even if there is a big energy, big effort, big amount of money, uh, tackling gender differences and stereotypes is so much difficult. It can cost a lot in terms of reputation. Uh, we have a lot of different uh, experiences around us. 
Uh, but this is, this is to say that it's really a very difficult job. I hope that the experts that we have today uh, will give us the tools in order to ah, <laughs> to, to oppose that and to, to help you in, uh, uh, to help you in to, for non-discriminating women, promoting women, uh, of course, talented women, the right women. It's not about uh, having uh, women to have more women, it's about talent. Of course, this is really the basis of our mission in GEM. It's about uh, a good talent management and good talent management uh, uh, brings along, of course, uh, good talented, but we are enough women full of talent in order to fill in the positions. So I will uh, leave the floor to uh, Sarah that has a lot of uh, things to say because she's uh, at a very crucial point in the system with the executive search. You will tell us if all the executive, executive search companies are so much aware as yours about gender differences. Uh, I'm afraid not, but you will tell us more. So. <laughs> Thank you.